Hi, everyone. This is Carol Eliel at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, Curator of Modern Art here. And um, welcome to our webinar. I will say that this is my first um, participation other than at your end of a webinar. So bear with me as um, hopefully we won't have any techno problems, but if we do, bear with us. Um, I am Curator of Modern Art here at LACMA, where I have been for almost 30 years, um, having started as a curatorial assistant. Um, during my tenure as president of the AAMC from 2011 to 2013, I spearheaded the creation of the mentorship program, so I'm very proud that um, you all are a part of it, and I am as well. I received my BA from Yale and my MA and PhD from the Institute of Fine Arts at NYU. And our two panelists today wave when I say your name. Uh, Catherine Evans, Catherine Wade, so everybody knows who you are, joined the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh in 2014 as chief curator. Prior to the Carnegie, she was the William and Sarah Ross Soder Curator of Photography at the Columbus, Ohio Museum of Art, where she also served as chief curator. And before that, she was assistant curator in the photography department at MoMA and at the Canadian Center for Architecture in Montreal. Catherine received her BA from Williams College. In 2001, Catherine spearheaded the acquisition for the Columbus Museum of the Photo League Collection, one of the true highlights of the Columbus Museum's collection and for which it is known across the country and the world. She co-organized with the Jewish Museum of New York the 2011-12 exhibition of that collection, The Radical Camera, New York's Photo League, 1936 to 1951, and co-authored the catalog published by Yale University Press. In addition to her curatorial achievements, Catherine is a 2012 TEDx presenter and Vice President Governance of the Association of Art Museum Curators. And our other panelist, Joan Young, I guess by definition, Joan Young, <laughs> is Director of Curatorial Affairs at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York, where she provides administrative oversight for the curatorial department of Guggenheim UBS MAP Global Art Initiative. Before joining the staff at the Guggenheim, she was a curatorial intern at both the San Jose Museum of Art and at SF MoMA. And in fact, she initially came to the Guggenheim as an intern. She received her BA from Penn, and after her Guggenheim internship, her MA from the University of Texas. Since her return to the Guggenheim as a staff member in 1995, she has organized exhibitions of, among many others, Tacita Dean, Emily Jasir, Rickert Taravanija, Julie Maratu, and Gabriella Rosco, the last co-organized with Nancy Spector. She has also worked on other exhibitions, including major projects by Robert Rauschenberg, Lawrence Wiener, Matthew Barney, and Marina Abramovich. In addition to her more traditional curatorial role, which involves exhibitions, acquisitions, fundraising, all the things we all do, uh, Joan's responsibilities also include more managerial tasks, such as budgeting and coordinating staffing needs for the curatorial department, which means she is involved in hiring for two to three positions a year. So you can see we have very um, qualified and wonderful panelists um, who have much to offer all of us. I will start with an opening question for Catherine. And as we go along, if you have, um, you the um, attendees have questions, type them into your keyboard. We may address them directly. We may address them in the context of bigger questions. We may address them right away or down the road, but we're not ignoring you. So don't worry if you have an immediate answer. So my opening question for Catherine, who has been at the Carnegie now for about a year, is that correct, Catherine? Six months. Six months, okay. Um, how did you update or shape your own CV when you went through the interview process recently that led to your position at the Carnegie? Uh, thanks, Carol. It uh, was an interesting process because I'd been in my previous job for 17 years and hadn't really thought about my resume in about that many years. Uh, but uh, I think the key piece, and it's pretty um, straightforward when you, when you think about who are thinking about a specific job in a specific institution. Of course, you want to tailor your skill set and your experience, um, your cover letter, uh, all of that to that position and know the institution well, uh, as well as you can from the outside, so that you can uh, really try to find the right fit. Um, you know, I, I took out a lot of extraneous things as my job was uh, shifting from a curatorial position to a chief curator's position without a specific uh, curatorial, um, you know, department. 
I, you know, kind of edited out a lot of the photography specific things that had been, you know, um, part of my, my story. So I tried to emphasize more of the managerial and administrative kinds of um, things that I had been involved with. And knowing how I was going into a, a broader job. And talking about knowing as much as you can about the institution who you're speaking to, how did you go about learning that? Well, it's it's now you know thankfully fairly um, easy, and I think if you don't do that kind of homework, you are not worthy of you know being considered as a candidate. Um, certainly, the internet. I um, read as many articles as I could. I looked at the annual report. Um, I talked to colleagues. Um, you, you know, just try to tap as many avenues as I could um, with discretion, of course. Great, thank you. And an opening question for Joan, um, since you do hire people on an ongoing basis, when you are making a hire, what is it that you look for in a CV? Um, I suppose what I'm looking at first is their sort of research interests and how those cross over, of course, with the position um, and the institution, um, and also the types of responsibilities that they've had. Um, and so um, for me, a CV, um, it's great to include a little bit more than just, you know, a list of positions, but also a brief description of what some of the responsibilities have been um, with that, within that. Um, not a huge amount of information. I think it's nice to keep it kind of concise, <laughs> but um, to provide some insight. And, um, and also to, you know, in the cover letter, um, to be able to, um, I think, sort of elucidate then on um, your career path, um, things that might be missing from the CV, be able to highlight particular experiences that seem very applicable to the position or to the institution. So. And what about length of both the CV and the cover letter? Is there some length beyond which you roll your eyes and say, oh, this person is padding or no set guidelines or what would you say? Um, for me, I guess a cover letter, I think, I, I know that came up earlier. Um, Longer than one page is fine. I think one to two pages is is um, good, or even I mean, bridging over into three, but that gets a little long. Um, but to be able to um, just highlight particular points, as I mentioned, from the CV, and then in a CV, I I don't think there's any particular length. I think there's some extraneous material that's extraneous that sometimes is included, but um, short or long, it doesn't matter. If you get a six or eight page CV, you it's don't. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's really great to know. Um, a follow-up question for you, Catherine, and please, um, attendees, as we go along, if you have questions, type them into your keyboards. I think um, someone had made a comment that they don't have a microphone. I think none of you can actually speak to us such that we can hear you. The way you, quote-unquote, speak to us, that you type into the question um, section on the GoToWebinar control panel and we see those questions and can um, address them that way. So please feel free at any point to, um, to type in questions. So a follow-up um, question for you, Catherine. Um, what did you learn about the job application process from your recent job change that could be helpful to others? Uh, yeah, I, I was in a somewhat, I wasn't actually looking for a position um, and so I um, but I was very curious and so I think um, one thing to really think about either if you're applying and you're at in the marketplace or if, you know you're approached is is this something you want to spend uh, your time you know whether it's uh, revising and editing and doing the research on your CV and then doing the research on the institution and uh, is it something you really want to invest time in and and do you think about the institution as well? Um, is this something that you, you don't want to take waste anybody's time your own or the uh, potential um, Institution and so I was careful uh, to really think about that in the beginning. Um, I had to really ask myself some hard questions, especially having been in a place for as long as I had been. And I think most of the people on the um, 
uh, that we're speaking to, um, correct me if I'm wrong, or, you know, a different chef wouldn't necessarily ever be in a position for as long as I've been, or maybe you, Carol, um, or even Joan, you've been mm -hmm. <laughs> at the Goog for a while. Um, but, you know, so you may be more accustomed to this idea of thinking uh, uh, of your career in these kind of um, stages that may or may not be at the same institution. But I, I think it's really important to not just go in blindly and think about your own um, you know what this means for you, for your own uh, life and career, and if if that's really where you want to go, um, that can evolve as you go through the process. That's kind of what I learned I, initially. I was uh, curious and flattered, of course, so um, I thought I would really like to um, take it seriously. And um, I, I don't know exactly, Joan, how you go through the steps of your hiring process, but for me, it was a phone conversation. Uh, then it was, uh, you know, submitting a lot of materials, including references, and then uh, some in-person. Oh, I think I don't think I had Skype interviews. I think I had in-person interviews. So um, that's another aspect that is really kind of a relatively new tool in the whole process. And I think uh, maybe Joan, you could speak to some of the pros and cons of that. Uh, uh, I've been looking at some candidates for positions here and. Um, you know, find that there can be quite a difference between this, what we call them, you know, the talking head and then the personal in, in uh, uh, up close and personal kind of interview. Um, so I think, uh, you know, be curious, ask a, a lot of questions, um, uh, make sure you're prepared for a phone interview. That was something that, you know, is not just, that's a serious piece of the process or you have to make a great first impression. Um, and so I, I think I took every step very seriously, um, and I would advise that. <laughs> There's a, a question that's come up, Catherine, that I think is very much related to where you're at. Um, from Tanya, how can you use the interview process as part of your information gathering so that you come to a decision from an informed position? How, how did you feel you were able truly to understand what the Carnegie was about? Yeah, and I think that's, Just you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a dance, of course. You're, you're as an interviewee, that's your, you may, we all feel, I think, on the hot seat, but you're also um, assessing the institution. And so always remember that it's, a, it's that two-way kind of um, collaborative uh, decision-making process or, or assessment, I would guess. And um, I, I asked questions. I, I think you need to have questions. Uh, you know, for example, when I was in, being interviewed by some curators, I asked them how they saw the position or imagined the position of a chief curator impacting their daily work. Um, and that can give you some insights. Um, um, we talked about some the other day when we were chatting about, you know, what are the red flags? Um, as a as a candidate, what do you, what should you be, you know, thinking? Ah, oh, that, that doesn't sound so great. And it, I think it's, um, you know, obviously if there's a lack of professionalism or a lot of, um, if you feel like you're being manipulated in some way, or, um, you know, there's a tone that you don't like that maybe is gossipy, or you know, there could be any number of things that um, don't, you know, that you should pay attention to, make note of, and think about. Um, but the basic information gathering, um, you know, is, is really out there for anyone to um, to gather. It's just, um, I think you, the nuance, the more nuanced things are the things that come out in those conversations. Joan, a follow-up question for you, um, following up on what you look for in a CV. Um, what questions, either specifically or typologically, do you ask in interviews that you find are really revelatory? Um, well, I think, oh, yeah, we were also speaking about this the other day, whether the general questions is sort of what are your strengths or weaknesses, um, if, the, if those are things I find useful, um, which I don't really so much personally. Um, and um, so I try to ask more, get into more specific conversations about experiences and prod, past projects and different challenges. Um, and then evaluate how forthcoming people are with their responses. 
um, how much they share about you know, some of the challenges that they've confronted, um, and how much they reveal then about how uh, they collaborate with people, how sensitive they are to the, you know, an institution's needs or other their colleagues' needs, um, and um, try to, I guess, hone in on that way what, with um, conversations about specifics as much as possible. Um, and but I was going to say, Catherine's been saying I do try to also be able to kind of give a sense of the culture of the Guggenheim, um, and um, and be as honest I think as I can be. Um, but I am curious then to see how a a candidate responds to you know what kind of questions they ask, um, what they seem to be you know kind of maybe what aspects of our culture then they seem to be most interested in because it really is very much of trying to figure out what the, the personality fit is um, how well they they you know would work within the institution I think I, I'm not a panelist though I will just add here that I do feel that people tend to forget in the process that so much of both what the interviewer is looking for and the interviewee is that personal fit and that um, you know the the institution is looking for someone who's going to sit at a desk in their institution for you know hopefully a, some significant period of time, and that person has to be happy, and the other people at the other desk have to be happy as well. So it really is important, um, not just the academic and the publication, et cetera, qualifications, but that sense of this is a person I want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, a related question that has come in. Um, how does, which I think um, probably is more for you, Joan, but maybe also for you, Catherine, um, how does one overcome areas where you know that you're weak? For example, the questioner says, my institution doesn't support publication, so I'm weak in that area. How do I deal with issues like that? <laughs> well, but I think um, there's, of course, other, you know, writing that, that comes along with any person's job. So with, you know, how you're kind of in terms of press releases, uh, all the didactic materials, marketing materials, working with education. Um, so being able to show examples in that way or any kind of website activity, um, even, and of course any public publishing that you've done outside of the institution as well. Catherine, other, um, were there times when you felt you were being asked about something that you didn't think of particularly as your strength, how, how did you handle that? How do you manage that? Yeah, I, I absolutely, and um, uh, certainly that's a really important thing to think about in, as you're assessing your own skill set. Um, I felt that I had a weakness in, um, you know, I mean, I haven't on, I've done budgets, I've done a lot of that kind of work, but I didn't feel that I had, that that was a particular strength. Um, so I wanted to be candid about that, but I also wanted to, in, I think as you address or express, you know, potential weaknesses, you also want to say, but I know how to get the answer, or I'm willing to, you know, I'm doing this to figure that part out, or I think you really, it's not, you know, the willingness and openness um, to, to learn and to um, be part of the team and to figure out who are the, you know, strong players in that area, um, I think that that can be as important, um, you know, we, none of us have the whole um, spectrum of skills, so um, I think being somewhat candid about it, but also strategic. Um, there, if you're a terrible writer, you know you probably shouldn't be in the um, curatorial business, <laughs> I, I would say. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, but, you know, so, so I think it takes some, I, I'm sure that's not the case, but um, just, uh, you know, think about what proportion of your job is going to demand that area that you feel less, um, comfortable with, um, you know, so, yeah, I would say that that's, that's an important thing to think about. Um, a question from Brian, can the three of you speak to answers you have had with, the, with headhunters or recruiters, whether as the person being recruited or as the person involved in a hire that uses a recruiter? He says, I'm curious in particular about how much you share with the recruiter versus what you withhold until you meet with the search committee. Um, you Joan, do you, you hold what? 
Um, well, we I, we don't use the headhunters so much for um, for the our curatorial positions, but we do reach out to um, to colleagues to make recommendations um, in some cases. So um, and um, and then uh, you know contact those those um, curators directly to with information about the project, the position, to see if they are interested. Um, There's a little bit of a break up and. Can you, should I repeat? Can you hear me? Um, I can hear yeah, you fine. Yeah, you a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Yeah, if you can't yeah. hear, type that into your question, yeah. just to say I can't hear. I'm not getting any of those comments, so I think you were heard, Joan. Okay. Okay. Catherine, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I, my experience with headhunters was um, the use, the first question usually is, you know, there's this job, who, who would who, who would you recommend? I mean, I'm always like, oh, okay, you know, so, and I usually have, I said, well, let me think about it, and then at some point it gets around to, well, would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And um, I, usually, I don't know, the, I, it hasn't happened that often, really, but um, when it has happened, very soon after that initial contact, if there's more interest, um, the institution yeah. starts speaking to you directly. I haven't had a situation where I've um, always gone through the headhunter. It's usually, um, so um, how much do you withhold? How much do you um, share? It, I think initially it's, you know, the basic thank you so much and for reaching out to me and, you know, if, if I don't. I keep it pretty. I mean, I was, I wasn't terribly forthcoming initially be, with those kinds of phone calls, just because I, you know, it would basically be a cold call. Um, so um, for me, it was, you know, tell me more, um, and that's that's a, always a good line, I think. Um, and then you say, well, thank you very much, and then you know, be back in touch, et cetera, et cetera. You kind of have to take it take the lead from them, I think, a little bit, uh, we're definitely, um, it's, um, I think it, one thing that I think happens is if you keep turning down opportunities, then event, you know, those same companies start, you know, don't reach out to you anymore. So if you really are in, in the market or thinking you might be, it's important to, to sort of at least take the next step, I would say. Um, because that's, you know, it is a small world, Joan, you said talking to colleagues and, um, you know, that's, that's what I would recommend. And I wanted to add that um, even, you know, from my perspective, even if someone maybe is not interested in or not, it's not the right time, you know, for a specific opportunity, um, I have still, you know, at least enjoy the opportunity to speak with them. Um, to learn more about the, you know, what their situation is, their background is, learn from that, and also um, then, you know, whether that might lead into an op another opportunity in terms of That's involving right. them with public yeah. programming, with publishing, etc. So I think it's still worthwhile to, if you've been, you know, invited um, to maybe apply for a position or something, to, to you know, to engage in at some level of conversation. Oh, I would agree too. Yeah. Um, which sort of takes me to the next question um, that has come in. How does one retain candor while engaging in a job search? If I don't want my institution to know I'm, quote, on the market, how do I deal with the request for internal references? Um, oh, I, I'll, I'll that feel out. that one because it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I empathize. Um, uh, I, you know, that is a very, it's an awkward moment because uh, naturally, you don't want you want to be discreet with your own institution and with the um, institution reaching out to you. Um, the way I um, hand, I, I don't know I'm speaking to specifics was that when that question came up towards the end of my process, um, I, uh, I of course hadn't listed anyone internally, um, and then I did have one. Um, you know, call, close colleague that wasn't in a was in a different department, and um, you know, I knew I could count on her discretion. So, um, I think that that's how you handle that. Um, 
um, and it worked out fine. I mean, uh, I think, what, you think maybe that also goes to, oh, go ahead. Do you think it's fair simply to say, hey, Ma doesn't know I'm looking, so I would, um, you know, I would prefer that you not contact people there? I'm happy to give you other references. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's certainly um, a, a very acceptable response. Yeah. Um, that could, and, and depending on your where you are, that that may be the only response. Um, certainly, when, in, a, in any application, you you have to be prepared to provide references, and um, even that can be, you know, it may be people that know your people really well, or that you've worked. With, typically that you've worked with in the past. So whether it's inside or outside, it's, it, it depends. You have to have um, trust that everyone will be um, discreet. But I think it's good to, to make that clear from the start, you know, to just state that this is the, your, your present institution isn't aware um, that you're considering other opportunities and, we, we, you know, we would totally respect that. And it's only when you get to those final stages, I think, of wanting to speak with references, then you can negotiate and figure out who the right people are to talk to. And, and a related question probably for you, Joan, are there things that candidates do in interviews that undermine or sabotage their chances at a position? Oh. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Tough one. Um, well, I think part maybe is speaking too much and not listening enough and not um, uh, responding to what, you know, really kind of engaging in a conversation, responding to, to what we're saying and we're trying to respond to what you're saying. So really, um, Make you know speaking too much, just sort of too much, too too much monologue. <laughs> I, I on that um, this is a minor, maybe somewhat minor thing, but up speak would like that would be a game changer for me <laughs> or deal breaker. Um, so, and the excessive use of like is another problem for. <laughs> I think my generation, but in general. Uh, uh, so uh, I think the listening part, Joan, is a really key piece. So if you are, if you're prepared with a specific question, you know, be prepared to really listen intentionally to that, and reference that as you go through a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the, I think, um, what else? I mean, bad things, let's see. Um, Can I interrupt you just for a second, Catherine? Because Brian said, "Sure." Brian said he, you're breaking up a bit on my screen too. Brian said he couldn't hear oh. your comments about the deal breaker because of a poor video connection. So I'm going to repeat what I think, oh. sort of the core okay. of what I think you said. And if I'm getting it wrong, sure. let me know. And Brian, if you still can't understand, please let us know. Um, one of the things that Catherine said is the deal breaker for her is up speak, which I think she means is when you finish every sentence as if you were asking a question, um, which makes <laughs> Good it one. Yeah. <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. Um, and she also said that the use of the inappropriately frequent use of the word like, like I know, like, you know, like that, um, is a deal breaker for her too. So I think you have to think about how you present yourself uh, as you speak, in addition to how you look on paper and how you may write and what your publications are, et cetera. So, did I get that right, Catherine? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when you, it may sound like a minor um, detail, uh, but you're also, uh, you know, these days, um, curators have to be fundraisers and donor, you know, donor interfacing and all kinds of roles that, uh, so that you, how you present yourself is. Very important. Needless to say. Um, a question for both of you. Um, are there different strategies for in person versus via Skype or just on a phone? Joan, maybe why don't you start? Because you've probably done all of those. <laughs> and um, as we were speaking earlier this week, uh, Skype has become, I've become more kind of a fan of, especially because we've been doing a lot of 
um, you know, sort of international curatorial searches. So um, just I think over the past year using Skype more um, for that rather than just the phone. And I do find that Skype over phone, um, unless there's, you know, particular like bad connections and if it's the video keeps breaking up, then I'm perfectly happy just switching to, to audio and, and not pursuing that. But, um, but it's nice to, you do get a sense of um, person's environment, you know, how, what they select is sort of the background drop, the backdrop for their, um, for their frame. Um, and uh, a sense, a little bit more sense of, of personality, I think, comes through by being able to, to see each other. Um, uh, and then, but as I, I was thinking too, there's some, I feel like a, it tends to be a little bit more casual too in conversation than an in-person interview, um, perhaps just by being in your own sort of, sen your own setting, your own personal setting, you're more comfortable. Um, but then there seems to be, when you meet in person, often uh, a little bit, it, it seems like a different dynamic sometimes. Um, but it's good, I think, to have both of the, um, the experiences. Um, to see how someone, um, you know, how they do uh, perform on a computer screen or interacting with, you know, their laptop um, as, as, uh, as well as in person then. Catherine, do you have anything to add to that or any experiences that um, might relate? Yeah, I, I think um, it still seems to me now, even looking at some positions that we have open here, that we're, we sort of do, you know, the first passes through all the resumes and it's the looking at the resumes and it's the phone not everyone is on the phone obviously that's more of a one-to-one -one. Um, and although in one of my interviews I think I there were more people on the phone than um, just one um, and uh, yeah I think the Skype is an incredible tool um, it doesn't uh, we've had the experience here of having you know a great Skype interview with someone, and then someone so that person sort of falling flat in person. So you know, and that can happen to anyone on any given day. I think you need to give latitude and be generous, um, you know, as you're in interacting in all these different ways. Uh, um, so it's I think it's an I think it's a great tool, um, and I would be prepared if anyone that is Okay. We just lost. Um, you know, absolutely practice quirky mannerisms. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we have a really I bad lost, connection with uh, the slow connection. Yeah. Oh. Uh oh. Oops. Uh -oh. Yeah. We just we lost have, me. Uh, well, well, we have you on audio still. While you're um, okay. working on that, uh, um, question. Okay. Um, during, during an interview, if you are posed questions about your present institution and asked if there is something you did not like or even why you are looking to leave, how should, how should one address those sorts of questions? Um, Joan, are those the kinds of questions you ask, or those? I think that's a bit <laughs> I think that's a it's a bit unfair, <laughs> a bit um, inappropriate. I think what I would try, how I would maybe strategically try to get to that information, is more about some of the challenges that you faced in your your position or with certain projects, um, and how you've um, then you know sort of addressed those, negotiated those, found solutions. Um, because I think I'm trying to, you know, find, learn more about your working methods, your um, kind of creative response, you know, to problem solving and such. So, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't think that someone should necess necessarily, a red flag for me, I guess it would be if someone is complaining about their present situation. So, but if, if as an interviewee you are asked those sorts of yeah. questions, you can turn it around and say, yeah. You know, challenges I have faced, yeah. not necessarily things that I don't like, but exactly. just things that I've done. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Catherine. I'm working on getting um, some assistance to get back on view here. <laughs> okay, well, we can still hear you. So if yeah. you have anything to add, I mean, have you ever been asked that sort of a question? And then, of course, when you're, could you, when could... people, your experience has been a little different, your recent experience, because as he said, you weren't looking, so when you're not looking, the assumption is you're happy where you are, and people then are trying to recruit you away. It's a different process. 
So um, I lost the visual. Another. Uh, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I was a little distracted. Um, a question, Catherine, that I think would be very appropriate appropriate for you. Um, how does one prepare if asked to give a job talk? What would be expected in a job talk? Present. Is that is that the um, question? I assume, I, I assume that means in addition to being invited for an interview that you're asked to give a talk at that institution, but you know that it's a part of the vetting process. And what would and and what would that talk be about, or or how do you or do you say? I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Is it the question is whether yeah, you should is, say yes or whether or what it should be about? Well, I think what what if if you're asked to give a formal job talk, what that would entail? I mean, I guess I can address that a little bit um, and say typically. Um, people expect you to talk about some area of expertise that you have that you have perhaps been working on recently, a, a project in progress, um, so that they can see how you present publicly. I think part of being a curator is also being able to make public presentations. If it's a walkthrough to patrons of an exhibition, if it's a presentation of a potential acquisition to your board of trustees or to potential funders, though knowing how you present an important part of uh, the process, the vetting process. So um, yeah. I think yeah, you Carol, think I think, think um, sorry, am I back on mm -hmm. now? Yeah, I mean, you're not sounding so good, Catherine. Um, I mean, Joan, do you have anything you want to add? Do you ever ask people to make formal talks as a part of their process? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I haven't had that experience, but I think to be able to um, um, exactly they want a, you know to get a sense of of how um, your sort of public presentation here. in the variety of the um, the variety that you just described um, and what we do you know in the conversation even then if it's not a formal you know public talk but trying to get exactly a sense of what your research interests are. Um, talking a bit about that, you know, your experience with dealing with the board, with uh, making the different types of presentations um, that are made either to the general public, to the various audiences that you might be interacting with at a museum, trying to learn more about um, how you handle those. Okay, and then um, this is a, a really good question and I think a really can, tough question. Can, can, um, could we to the salary negotiation process. How do you handle that in the most effective manner? Um, do you want to address that, Catherine? Or are you not ready yet? <laughs> oh, why don't you take it, you. John? Uh, can you hear me now or not? Yes, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's a good connection. Can you, can you, yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, do you want to speak to that, Catherine? The salary negotiation okay. process. How do you handle it in the most effective manner? Okay. Um, uh, I think I, I, it, it was something that I wasn't sure when to insert into the process um, because it. I hope not to get into a situation where. You know, um, you're pretty far along in the process, and Catherine, we're losing you again. I think interesting time. You you don't know exactly two thirds of the way through, um, and I think that. Uh, Catherine, we can't right hear time. you. Um, Catherine, we can't hear you. So I think, let's see. Catherine, um, yeah. if, if you could, Catherine, can you hear me? Okay. Catherine, I think we're going to have to hey, ask Carol, you to turn. I'm sorry, your I don't know what's wrong on my end. Could you turn your camera off because we can hear you turn fine. Me off. Okay. We'd love to see you. We'd rather hear you than see you. <laughs> Yeah, let's okay. see if that works. Stop yeah. sharing my webcam. Yeah. 
Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. So, yeah, much better. Yeah, so why don't you start? Why don't you start answering that question again about oh, how oh. you? All right. So oh. um, yeah, for me it was uh, a little bit tricky, and because I didn't know when to insert that um, moment. Of question. I mean, I I had form is, but you, you can Google you know what, and get Catherine. through some for. Um, not-for-profit website, you can figure out sort of general salaries. Um, and um, so I, about two-thirds of the way through my print. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? You know what, I think we're going to have to move to Joan talking a little bit about that question from the other side. Because unfortunately, uh, you keep I'll, cutting I'll in and So Joan, yeah, do you so want to? Sure. Um, uh, we, I guess we do, I mean, we have a state, uh, okay. an application that, or sort of form where we do ask candidates to kind of give um, um, by myself, but more with our HR department, um, who fairly, um, I think, early on, um, you know, once we've sort of gone through a first round of interviews, does try to speak to the candidate to sort of see what, if their range is realistic within the institution. And if not, then, you know, to also be, um, they come back to the curator, curators, you know, to us to talk about that and um, see how we want to, you know, handle to be direct with the candidate and sort of say our scale is a slightly different, you know, would you be willing to, to consider. Um, that still so but trying I think not to go on you know to go too too far into the process before we have uh, some of that discussion oh, okay thank you and um, another question that uh, has come up in past discussions how can a candidate reveal him or herself in an interview as a creative person and how does an interviewer go about trying to flesh that out in the process, the sense of the candidate's creativity. Mm -hmm. um, I get that I'll respond. I'm not sure if Catherine's back with us. Um, but um, I, I'm here. I don't know there? if you can hear me, but Oh yes, yes, good. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay. okay, well Jeff, why don't why don't you answer and then we can let Catherine Great. talk a bit as well. Yeah. Well as I um, I think I said before I try to um, to ask about particular projects uh, that you know that they've shared with um, their through their CV um, places. Uh, you know the sort of projects that to strike me as having certain probably pose certain challenges. Um, whether it's you know bringing dancers into within the gallery within an exhibition or something, asking how they if there were problems that they you know faced um, and how they then dealt with that or whether there were certain compromises they had to make um, and um, and flesh out that way. Um, one thing I was also going to note too with um, we've been asking probably you know after a first conversation with an, a candidate um, if they can provide a sort of portfolio of images of past of installations and exhibitions um, so that we have a more of a so we get a sense of sort of what the aesthetic is um, for. And is that you expect a digital a PDF, yeah, a PDF is great. Um, but if it can be, you know, sort of clearly identified images um, in, in a brief, maybe description of the exhibition, um, I think is really useful to have also a sort of a, then a concrete um, example for us, for me to to be able to refer to um, in in our discussion as well. I think is is very useful. So better than just me, you know, googling online and looking at museum websites for the information there. But um, it's also interesting to see the selection of images that a, a curator, you know, then makes um, to represent an exhibition after the fact um, and such there. So, um, but as I was also going to note, if, you know, when I'm making, asking questions that maybe didn't, um, aren't, the experience isn't so uh, relevant, the, the candidate wants to highlight some other, um, other um, example. Um, I think that's great. It's it's you know the sort of whatever stories a candidate candidate can pro provide, how forthcoming they are with with um, 
both talking about their and um, maybe some of the um, you know some of the the failures, things that they would do differently. Um, that some of the lessons learned um, is always it's great, it's useful. Catherine, um, do you have any insights on how you can reveal yourself as a creative person from the interviewee side? I'm, I'm or the interviewer side. Uh, okay, maybe we <laughs> maybe we won't be hearing from Catherine. Um, and then uh, we uh, touched on this in the context Carol? of references. Catherine, this is like, Catherine. <laughs> oh, hi. oh well, we couldn't hear you. I'm I'm that. here. I don't. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can hear you. Do you have thoughts to add in terms of oh, how I'm you sorry. Can you hear me? Be a creative uh, uh, Mm-hmm. No, there's still something oh. wonky with your connection. I think it. I was it's listening to Joe, and I think that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll stop trying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, just one. Um, as I said, Joan, we sort of touched on this in the context of references, but. Um, also, in the context of just your physical presence at your desk in an ongoing way, how do you manage interviewing while employed full time, assuming assuming that you don't want your current employer to know that you're looking? Mm -hmm. any, any tips or strategies? <laughs> okay, so, okay. Um, it's, I, I, well, it's when it, sometimes that's when being in very different time zones helps. I guess because you're able to <laughs> to schedule things. Um, in, after hours, um, but otherwise, um, my God, might be a better question for for Catherine. Um, but um, I think that I think you know institutions are also. I'm happy to try to be flexible to try to meet at times. Um, of course, that um, when are more you know that, that a candidate can manage um, around business hours, or also meet you know. And I would also say that I've met. Um, People, you know, at cafes um, or over lunch or um, things. So, if you know, in terms of that way, being able to kind of compromise and where we meet and meet midway, if that's more convenient too, um, so that it's not taking that much time out of their day and out of their daily life. Catherine, did you um, hear the question if there? Um, I did. Um, can you hear me? I tried to put my picture back on. I don't know if that helps yeah. or hurts. Um, yeah, I, I think that the interviewer is understanding and certainly would know that there's that could be an issue. I happen to have my own office in my old job, those conversations during the day. Yeah, but if you can, then you absolutely, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, sorry. I don't know if it's the Canadian um, connection right. or what the problem is. Yeah. And one thing I would just uh, point out as a well. one thing I would point out as a very practical matter is that it may um, be very wise to use a personal email address rather than your work email address for communications right. with potential employers. And it seems very obvious, but people forget. Yeah. Um, you know, you print something out on a communal printer and you forget to pick it up. You have yeah. something open on your screen and you forget to close it up right. when you leave your office and someone comes in to drop something off on your desk. And so um, you have um, quite a bit of control over the discretionary parts of the process um, and take advantage of those. But, Absolutely. Um, so we have one question here from Brian. He says, this question is institution specific, but I wonder how tightly one's interview answers and job talk need to correlate to the hiring institution's priorities. Mm -hmm. For example, if your strength at one job is organizing temporary loan exhibitions, but the hiring institution is particularly eager to bring in someone to work with its collection, how should one address that relative imbalance? Um, any thoughts, Joan, on that? I mean, is this someone who would, would was that a, a CV that you would pick out of the pile to interview for that position, or do you think that that's not likely to get to that stage? Or no, I mean, I think well, that I think we understand that there's a, a lot of um, you know institutions have different 
um, sort of priorities in terms of collection building, exhibition focus, etc. So um, I think um, while relevant, it's not, you know, it's not sort of a deal breaker. It's more where um, those sort of research interests align um, and working methods sort of approach the approaches to projects and how well that fits with the culture of the institution, the personality of the institution. I think that's what's more um, more important. I guess to me than having you so know maybe that direct experience. So even someone coming from a Kunsthalle could um, easily transition into an an institution where the job focuses on collecting if the exhibitions that person had organized align with the collection goals, yeah. etc. Because I think if they can bring up you know a background and knowledge um, and expertise certainly in, in some of the areas that overlap with the institution um, and an interest you know to be able to to the vocalize an interest in um, collection building um, is important though. I'm going to do the one if that's so, part of the job. Then, um, one final question for both of you. Um, is there a proper way to use outside job offers as internal leverage? Mm. <laughs> you want to take that first, Catherine? I wish, uh, I wish, yeah. uh, well, if you can hear me, yeah, if this works, um, I would say that it's a risky business to um, use that as leverage. I think once you, you know, if that's really your goal is to get a better you know, an increase in your salary or in your position in your in, in your current institution. Um, don't necess don't bank on the fact that you've got outside offers as something that's going to get you there. Um, and I think, especially in our field, uh, rare is it that you would there would be a bidding war for for you. Um, it it might change the debt, the salary by several. You know. A, Few thousand dollars or something, but is that really what you're going after? Is what I would. Um, I mean, it can make a difference, of course, but um, you don't want to get yourself into a situation where you've announced to your director or, uh, that X Y Z is interested in you, and and then that director says, "Fantastic, you know, good luck with that." Um, so you you know, it's it's. It may be tempting to think of that as a strategy, but I don't think it's a very um, wise path to go down. Um, I think once you've made your decision, you've got your offer, you you know, or if you're you've had the offer and you're not a hundred percent sure, that might be a conversation you could candidly have with your director or uh, a colleague. But um, I wouldn't use it as ammunition. John, do you have yeah. any? No, I'd say I would John, agree. Would you agree? I would agree, <laughs> definitely, and um, and maybe you know if there are mm -hmm. opportunities that come to you that you're not you you know you're, that you don't pursue that far, but it, that can still be um, certainly uh, something to discuss. You know, if you have it as we do, a sort of formal annual review process um, in terms of ways if you're looking to kind of expand your your position or, or um, um, reshape it in ways to. Say you know, then that's certainly a legitimate time to to discuss um, discuss that. So well, we've been on the phone here or on the computer for almost an hour. So I want to thank both you, Joan, and you, Catherine, for um, great insights. I have to say, I learned really useful things too, and I hope that those of you who are on the um, the, the audio end of this webinar have also found it useful. Um, if you have questions, um, you can find our email addresses on the AMC website. You all have great mentors, you, and I think everybody, from what I'm hearing and seeing, is um, having a very productive uh, relationship with their mentors. So thank you very much for participating. Thank you to Judith for um, setting this all up, and we will talk to you all again. Happy August. <laughs> Bye. Thank Thanks.